Secure Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full informed investment decision. This is your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMV. Now, here's Joe Anderson and Big Al Clopine. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money or Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al, hanging out. Hour one in the books, hour two coming at you. Uh, show's called What? Your Money or Wealth? That's We're right it. here on E and 760 KFMB. Yes. Hey, did you know this? That retirement, people are having a lot of fun. Yeah, they are having fun. Yeah, Merrill Lynch did a study. Leisure and retirement beyond the bucket list. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Did you, did you read anything about this? Uh, I did. I got probably different articles, same study. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mine, mine, if it, well, mine says retirees just want to have fun. Is that what yours says? Well, uh, no. It's probably the same study, though. Yeah, that's, it is the same study. What okay. do you got? Well, there's this list here. Um, because this research study surveyed 3,712 adults. Okay. Along with six focus groups. And the overall conclusion, the leisure in retirement has evolved into an extended period of newfound freedom. Yes. Leisure is not just killing some hours, but a transformation of oneself, and people are experiencing it with gusto. Gusto, yes. Interesting. Very interesting. So among the findings from retirees surveyed, 92% said they enjoyed the freedom of a less structured life. 92%. Cool. 86% Eighty-six uh, percent said it is relatively easy to find inexpensive leisure activities to enjoy. Eighty-two percent said they have the most enjoyable leisure experiences with their spouse or partner. Huh. Okay. Only twenty-seven percent said those times uh, were with their friends. Okay. You know, uh, there was another study that women would much rather spend time with their friends. Yes, and men not with, necessarily with their wives. <laughs> yes, yes. So there's a little disconnect there. Uh huh. Well, also, Joe. I mean, same study, and this is, uh, I guess, an observation that uh, we're entering a period where there are more people with free time on their hands, age 65 plus, than those who are time constrained, ages 35 to 44. First time in history. So we're going to be, in, and what they're thinking is leisure time is going to go way up. I guess we spend, as a, as a nation, about $178 billion per year. And they're thinking that's going to go up to about $232 billion in the next 10 years or so. And then now this study, this is, I, I guess some people have some time on their hands. But there's four <laughs> stages of retirement leisure. Really? Okay. Stage one, winding down and gearing up. So you got to wind down okay. from your uh Work life, you okay. know, gear up for leisure. For leisure, okay, you gotta figure it out. Um, you got some self discovery, is uh, stage two. Okay. Stage three is greater freedom and new choices. All right. Oh. Okay. And then um, stage four is contentment. Contentment. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Stage five. The, the, end of, stage end five of life. is death. <laughs> end of life. <laughs> yeah. You had so much leisure that you just couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> He <laughs> just got bored of being happy. He <laughs> just got bored of leisuring around. Uh, well, I got uh, uh, 76% of respondents age 65 to 74 say they often feel happy. And the 25 to 34-year-old, only 51%. So you get older, you get happy. Because they're, or, yeah, because they're on yeah, drugs. Yeah, free time. <laughs> they're, they're, they're on their medication. <laughs> yeah, they're on meds. <laughs> <laughs> they could have those cocktails. Any time of the day. Right. You know, having a cocktail at 10 o'clock in the morning is, it's okay. is not frowned upon. It's, 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 it's a suggestion. <laughs> yes, it is. Because Jimmy Buffett says it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Somewhere, right? Got to be somewhere. <laughs> so, um, you know, th- there's anxiety that people have when they approach retirement. It's, it's, it's a transformation. Um, but just know there that most people now in retirement after the study of 3000 people that I guess that's a big enough that's, sample it's a good sample is that you're going to be happy you're going to be happy you know just w- taking a leisure walk in your neighborhood that would drive me nuts that would not make me happy wouldn't make you happy no have you tried it no i don't want to <laughs> you should maybe you, maybe that's why you're not happy you, you, you're, you're taking, right clopine that's you, it taking walks in your neighborhood <laughs> oh man so all right, so this hour, I want to get into a couple of different things. 
I want to talk about uh, IRA distribution mistakes. Okay. A lot of mistakes that people make when it comes to their overall uh, retirement accounts. This is by Ed Slot. Ed Slot is a well-known expert in our field when it comes to retirement accounts and retirement plans. And um, I'm just going to kind of rapid fire these. But here's a few just to wet your whistle. Okay. Multiple accounts subject to RMDs. All right. Okay. So first of all, when you turn 70 and a half and you have retirement accounts, you have to take a, a mandate that you have to take a certain percentage out of the account per year. And each year as you age, that percent increases. It's just a, it's a divisor on life expectancy is basically what it is. But when you have multiple accounts, you have to be careful. All right. So if you have multiple IRAs, because let's say you have six different IRAs. You know, I have one at Fidelity, one at Charles Schwab, one at TD Ameritrade, one at Merrill Lynch because I want diversification. Right? Some people think that that's diversification, right? Yeah, Multiple custodians. One with your cousin Vinny, and you don't know where he's kept it. Sure. If you have multiple IRAs, now this is where the um, terminology gets people confused. Because if someone has a 401k, they might assume that that's just an individual retirement account. No, it has to be titled IRA. If you have multiple IRAs, you can take one required distribution out of just one IRA to satisfy all of your IRA. So you add up like all six account balances and you figure out, I got to do a $48,000 required distribution. I can do that out of one account. Yes. Okay. So if, uh, for example, let's say if you have a traditional IRA, a SEP, a simple IRA, right? So all of those can be bunched together to do one required distribution. Got it. All right. But let's say you have multiple IRAs, but then you also have your 401k plan. Yeah, rules are different. Aren't totally they? different. Yeah. You have to take a required distribution out of the IRA, and you have to satisfy the required distribution out of the 401k. And if you have two 401ks, you have to do it separately from each 401k. So, yes. So, and if you have an inherited IRA, so that's something completely different there, too. You can't add that to your current IRA. Correct. You yeah. can't add that. So you have to be careful on, all right, well, here, maybe I have a million dollars in seven different accounts. Maybe four of those are IRAs, a couple 401ks, and maybe a 403B or you know, a, a deferred comp plan. So how in the world are people supposed to know this? I have no idea. That's why they listen to Shell, Your Money, Your Wealth, <laughs> every week, weekend, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, right here on 760 KFB. KFB. Yeah, little yeah, plug. Like that plug? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So if you have a company plan, your 401k. Now, the 401k plan has a totally different rule there, too, if you're, if you're working. True. So if you're working, you do not have to take a required distribution once you reach 70 and a half out of that qualified plan if you're a participant in the plan. As long as you're not a, what, more than 5% owner of that particular company. Sure. And a solo 401k does not in, is not included in that. Right. So if you own your own business, right, a solo 401k, that means you own more than 5%, so that excludes you from that. Yeah, and then here's the weird thing about that one is, uh, so that 401k where you're employed less than 5%, you don't have to take a required distribution on that one. But if you have an old 401k, you have to take one on that plan and all your IRAs. Now, in some cases, Joe, maybe you can roll those old plans into your current 401k and avoid the required distribution requirement all you know all together. Yeah, exactly. Until you retire, then you take the distribution once you retire. And so there, your new 401k has to allow the rollover of other funds, but a lot of them do. Right. Yes, and so there's some strategy around that to avoid that required distribution, and then you probably could do some conversions from a particular plan, right? Maybe you don't roll them all into that particular 401k. You take, uh, you, you have a certain amount that's left over, and you convert that, right? Because then when it comes time for you to take a required distribution, you're chipping away at this thing. You're getting more dollars out of the 401k, more into a Roth, because guess what? A Roth IRA does not have a required distribution. But if you have a Roth 401k, the Roth 401k does have a required distribution. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's no wonder people are making mistakes on this stuff. I mean, how would any rational person have any idea about this stuff unless they listen to your money, your wealth? But for me, Joe, as a CPA, it's uh, it is rather amazing that uh, people don't get the message about tax planning until they make a mistake, and uh, then it's then they finally get it. But uh, here's the secret: is to make sure you don't have to learn the lesson the hard way, because you can save more taxes uh, than you think. But you must look a must use a forward looking tax efficient strategy. You gotta you gotta look ahead. You gotta figure this stuff out. It's not one year at a time anymore. You gotta look at the next 10, 20 years to figure out the best plan for you. All right, we gotta take a break. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll be back in just a second. This is your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. 
Hey, welcome back to the program. The show's called Your Money or Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al Clopine hanging out. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, check us out on iTunes. Check our podcast out if you'd like. Um, Your Money or Wealth. You can go to purefinancial.com too to uh, download the podcast each and every week. You can go to KFMB's website um, to download the podcast as well. So there's multiple ways if you want to continue to listen to the show. Uh, there is your portals to go to yourmoneyyourwealth.com. You can go to purefinancial.com. You can go to KFMB um, website. You can go to iTunes. So there wow, you go. Very, very impressive. You use the word portals. You're getting high tech now. Uh, yes. I, I, I don't know what other <laughs> word to say there. <laughs> you wouldn't have said that five years ago. Uh, there, I wouldn't have said it like five you days ago. You wouldn't have known what a portal is. <laughs> I don't know what a portal is. It's like a portal to go back in time. <laughs> Um, all right, hey, we're we're talking IRAs, yeah, and uh, I want to get into Roths because there's some okay. little facts here about Roth IRAs that um, I want to make sure that people know. Do you have eleven fast facts? I do. Okay, I, I don't know if I can get through all eleven, but I'm going to try. Okay, a couple of them are pretty common. If you're a regular listener to the show, you probably know it. If not, pay attention. First thing, there is an annual contribution limit. First thing you need to know is that you can't throw your entire life savings into a Roth IRA. Ideally, it would be cool if you could. Right? Yes, so if you got a lot of money sitting outside of your time or, you know, sitting in your uh, checking account, brokerage account, just to say, you know what, I'm going to put that in a Roth. No, there's contribution limits, 5500 bucks. If you're over 50, it's $6,500. Uh, there is no age limit for a Roth IRA contribution. True. There is an age limit on IRAs. Right. So if you're over 70 and a half, you cannot contribute to a IRA. But you can do it to a Roth IRA. If you are working, if you have earned yes. income. Or your spouse is working. Or your, yes, because there is that um, spousal <laughs> clear, contribution. Clear as mud, right? So if you're not working, your spouse is working, and you're both in your 70s, no problem. Well, you know what? I'm going to be 75. My wife is going to be 40. Yeah, I suspect that's Let's the say, track you're on. Oh, whatever. That was a joke. <laughs> And uh, that's reality. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be able to contribute to my Roth until like 90, until I die. So that means is your is your future wife yet born? She could. She hey, I don't be. know. Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! Just come on, Alan. Now people are going to think I'm like a pig. Well, they already know that. <sighs> so um, funny thing at the gym the other morning. Yes. So six o'clock in the morning, and um, um, spin class. Okay. Let's get the juices flowing. Sure. Yeah. Good idea. All right. And uh, this this guy comes up to me. He goes, Hey. He goes, I just got to say something to you. He goes, I have a real tough time sleeping. And I said, okay, you know, this is weird. And he goes, yeah, I caught your show the other day, 6.30 on Sundays. I love it. Watch it. Oh, can't wait. I was really? like, hey, thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he, he listened to our podcast, puts him right out. Yeah. No, that's his <laughs> hypnosis. <laughs> Listens, he goes to the podcast and yeah. puts him right to bed. And, but then he wakes up to our show. Yes, he loves the TV show. Hates, yeah. the, hates the radio show. Yeah, loves the TV. Yeah. Well, it's CBS we, uh, tomorrow morning, six thirty a.m. We, we just uh, what? Are, we've just been almost our seventieth episode over the last three years. Not bad. Really? That yeah. many? Yes. Wow. We did thirty year one, thirty year two. We just finished number nine for season three. I know because I You're good work on the script. Yeah, You're I'm good, good with numbers. numbers. Too. Yeah. Um, all right, back to Roth IRAs. Income <laughs> limits could prevent you from contributing. Um, so here's the new rules for 2016. Okay. Uh, so Roth IRA contributions could be limited if your MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income, falls between 117000 and 132000 So 117 to 132 So if you make more than $132,000, then you are not eligible to do a direct Roth IRA contribution. If you are married, the numbers are $184,000 to $194,000, all right? That's modified adjusted gross income. Just look at the bottom of the 1040. Look at that number. That's a pretty good estimate. Yeah, of what, be, in most cases, that's your, the same number. What is the difference between MAGI, modified adjusted gross income, and adjusted gross? Well, when it comes to Roth uh, contribution, they take out Roth conversions. That, that's probably the main difference. There's many modified adjusted gross income. Th that's the confusing part. There's a there's a modified adjusted gross income for rental real estate and others for other things. Right. So it's not like a certain thing. It's a, it depends on or like if you have foreign like tax mm -hmm. um, issues that yeah. could modify your adjusted yes. gross income. If you do a Roth, a good point there too, Big Al, is that if you do a Roth IRA conversion, right? So let's say that I'm single. And I make 
um, let's say $100,000 a year, and I do a $40,000 Roth IRA conversion, so then that's going to get my adjusted gross income, let's say, to 140000 bucks. Sure. So if I look here, it's like, okay, well, if you make more than $140,000 as a single taxpayer, you no longer can contribute to a Roth. But what they do is they modify it. They take the $40,000 conversion out, and they said, no, you only really made $100,000, so that will still qualify me to take uh, for me to do a Roth IRA contribution. Yeah, I've actually had some accountants to call me up because they, the client made a Roth contribution already, and they're thinking, well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work because their income's over, you know, 140,000, like in your example. And then it's allowed per the software, and they're thinking the software is flawed, and they give me a call, and I say, no, 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 the modified adjusted gross income, it doesn't include the Roth conversion, and that, that's the hard part. And when you, if, and there's other things, too, like I said, rental real estate, different modified adjusted gross income. So if you want to know what that is uh, for whatever you're looking it up for, you have to type in modified adjusted gross income, and then you have to type in what you're looking for, like Roth or rental real estate or other things like that, because they are different in each case. You got, um, w when it comes to withdrawals, too, regardless of where you invest your Roth IRA, it's FIFO tax treatment, first in, first out. True. All right, so any dollar that you put in as a contribution can be pulled out of the Roth IRA anytime for any reason, no tax, no penalties. At, at any age, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. You're 25 years old, you put $5,500 into a Roth, you need you, you there's some kind of emergency where you need to pull that out the following year you can take it out there's no penalty now of course if it grew then that interest or dividends or growth well that's going to be subject to tax and penalty right so you keep that in the Roth you let that grow until you turn 59 and a half and right. that, then that qualifies for the tax exempt uh, sure. treatment of that uh, particular investment um, if you have kids man uh, put a couple bucks in a Roth IRA for them. You know, if you want to help your kids out and you're saying, because I, I read this statistic is that most parents are helping their kids pay off their student loans. I would suggest that they put a couple of bucks into their Roth IRAs versus paying off the student loans. Right. Right. Because student loan interest right now is pretty small. I mean, you know, interest rates are pretty low and I could get into the statistics for you if you want. But let's say if you're you're paying off a thousand dollars, five thousand, something like that. I would say if your kid has earned income, maybe they have a paper route, maybe they uh, in the summer they do landscaping or whatever. Right? If they make more than five thousand dollars or fifty five hundred bucks, you can contribute to the Roth IRA for your child as long as they have earned income. Yeah, it I, doesn't have to come from their checking account. That's true, and and you're right. So they have to have earned income, and let's say they have a couple thousand dollars of earned income. Well, you can do two thousand dollars into a Roth IRA for them, and that's a great thing. Let's say they're fifteen years old and they're not going to retire for forty years, fifty years, whatever whatever the number is, right? right? Fifty years of growth on a two thousand dollar Roth conversion, you know, invested in in the market. That's going to be pretty good, right? Ta all tax free. All tax free to them, you know. So you know, birthdays, fifty bucks every birthday. That they, they have to have earned income though. So if they're five years old, they're not going to have earned income. <laughs> You'd break some not. child labor laws, <laughs> right? I don't know. My dad put me to work at five. Well, if if you're now, how about this? If you're a parent and you have your own business, you could put the kid on the payroll as long as you can justify their services. Yeah, have them sweep the floors. Yeah, right. Nothing wrong with that. You know, file. Shred. Four years old, sweeping the floors. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things here when it comes to taxes um, to take a look at. Roth IRAs, in Al and I's opinion, is probably one of the best gifts the IRS has ever given us. Got to take a break. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Now back to Your Money, Your Wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth right here on AM 760 KFMB. Joe Anderson, Big Al Clopine. I'm a certified financial planner. Big Al is a CPA, Certified Public Accountant. In record numbers, parents more than 6 in 10 whose children will take out student loans to pay for college say they will likely help their kids repay those loans, according to the fifth annual survey of 1,000 adults with children ages 16 to 18. It was released Monday. So I get it in a sense where it's like they feel obligated to pay for those loans. Right? Yes. Maybe they couldn't afford to save for their college, but hey, get the loan and we'll pay for it. Right. I think it's uh, it's it's kind of consistent with a lot of the baby boomer generation, which is, you know what, I want to make it easier on my kids than I had it. And so that's kind of part of that thinking, which is I'm going to help pay for my kids' education, maybe pay for it all. And uh, that's a that's a great goal. It really is a great goal. But Joe, what we're finding is it's affecting a lot of people's retirement because they're putting savings that they could otherwise save for their own retirement, paying off student loans, and then next thing you know, they don't have enough for retirement, and the kids are working and making a salary, 
right? So it, it doesn't quite work out. R- right. You can't take a loan for retirement. Not really. Yeah. Right? I, I, I suppose you could do a reverse mortgage. Yes, that is um, one. But uh, your options are, are rather limited when you're retired. And, and so what's happening now, especially with the baby boomers, is, is a lot of them are working longer than they want to work. And, and in some cases, that's fine because it's giving you an activity. But in other cases, uh, people are having to reduce their lifestyle at a time when they, where they really, they've been working all this time to enjoy the travel and whatever else they want to do. And they, can, and they can't do it or not to the extent they want to do it. Right. And I think the last thing that people want to do is become a burden on their kids. Right? You bet. And so it's like, okay, well, here, I want to pay off $100,000 of student loans. And that's draining my cash flow right now where otherwise that money should be going into my 401k plan. And then I pay off that loan. I don't have any money saved for retirement. Right? And we know the statistics. Oh, what almost half of people are forced into early retirement. Yes, it either is either because half. of layoffs, health, whatever. Yeah, even caregiving to a parent to, or yes, spouse. Yes, right, mm-hmm. exactly. And so it's like, okay, well, here I'm going to work now until age 70, 75, um, because I need to, because I didn't do this. I mean, it's it's all about the time value of money. A dollar saved today is going to be a worth a lot more in 20 years, 15 years from now, right? But if you're trying to pay off my, the, the, the kid's student loan over the next 10, 15 years, then start your savings, right? You're, you're going backwards here. You yeah. have to look at just simple cash flow calculations and say, you know what? All right, now that the, the child has a job, okay, they have salary, and they have 30 years to pay this loan off. Right. Where you're trying to cram it down while you're still working. It's, it's it's a very tough juggling act. It is a tough juggling act. And Joe, as a consequence, what we're finding is people are in their 50s without much savings because they have been paying, either they've been paying college as they go or they got these loans and they're trying to pay those off. And it's, uh, it's very difficult. And so I know this is way easier said than done. Right, exactly. But the truth is you, you kind of have to look at yourself first, right? And, and if you are okay yourself in terms of savings for your goals and you've run the numbers and all right, I'm maxing out my 401k and this is going to be enough for my lifestyle and you got extra okay great then go ahead and help pay off the student loans but otherwise it's uh, it's going to put you kind of in a predicament you know so uh, a couple of different ways to build wealth in your 50s Alan this was an article midlife is filled with challenges and opportunities yes but here's some uh, quick steps here to, to build wealth in your 50s forget your bonus yeah what go ahead and save it instead of spend it huh that yeah. actually that has a lot of merit because you you weren't necessarily expecting it. Well, then once you get it once, and it's like okay, well, where is it next? You, then you, some people already spend their bonuses before they get it. That's true. Have it's you ever like, seen National Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation? Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He bought the pool. Clark, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Clarky boy <laughs> buys the pool, and then what does he get? He gets like a gift certificate or something. Yeah. In fact, uh, not only I've seen it many times, and you used to accuse me of going on Griswold family vacations. Yes. Yeah, which, we would play the theme which, song. Which is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> we all pack in the car. Yes. Uh, remember your age. This is number two on this list. Uh, the year you turn 50, you can start making catch-up contributions. We've talked about this um, all throughout the show. So your 401k, you can make um, another $6,000 contribution to the plan for a total of $24,000. bucks. Uh, same with your IRAs. You can add another $1,000 to the IRA to get to uh, 6500 bucks. Uh, look into your future. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> well, what it, what it's talking about is uh, is take a look at what sort of lifestyle you want in the future, so you can motivate yourself to save today. So, in other words, it's easier to save if you have some kind of out uh, some kind of goal in mind. Okay, I want to retire at a certain age. I want to have a certain lifestyle. I want to live a certain place. I want to be able to travel. And if you can sort of visualize that, it makes saving today a lot more easy. But this is crazy. What um, this um, faceretirement.com is that the University of Chicago found that people who feel connected to their future self are more willing to wait for the reward. Right. Because it's that, you know, instant gratification. Yes. So we look at ourselves in the mirror today and we're saying, I want to, you know, help this guy out. Right? I'm looking in the mirror. You know what? I'm going to buy a new car. Right. Right. I need a new suit or whatever it is. Right. Okay. But then they have this website, uh, Merrill Edge does. Uh, we're not promoting Merrill Edge, but uh, they came up with faceretirement.com where it will, you can put a picture in, I guess, and then it will show you what you will look like 20 years from now. So if you're, uh, I'm 40, 
I, I'm going to throw that thing in there. Oh, I'm going to see what I look like at 60. I'm going to be like, damn, i got to start saving some money. i got to stop drinking those beers and more little <laughs> carrot juice. Yeah, exactly. But, right? I mean, yeah. if you can see yourself in the future of what you look like and things like that, you're going to be like, hey, I want to I want to take care of that person as well. Right, yeah, then that makes sense. And number four, Joe, is keep your hands off the 401K. We talked about that uh, because uh, when, the, when the kids go to college, that's really, really tempting to pull money out of your 401K, and we're telling you not to do it. And I know this is like a lot of things, easier said than done, because sometimes you feel like that's your only source, right? But uh, really, what's the 401K for? It's for your retirement. It's not for your kid's college. And I would encourage you to look for other means. And I I just had this conversation with um, some of our young staff members on Thursday. I said, you know what? College these days, is the costs are out of control. And I really think people need to start thinking about looking at the finances of college before they even go. And I would encourage a lot of you to start thinking about two years of junior college and then go to state college so that your your kids and you are not saddled with all this debt that's going to completely wreck your retirement. You know why um, the education costs are so high, don't you? What do you got? This is you know, from the School of Economics of Anderson School of Business. Okay. <laughs> Joe Anderson School yeah, of Business? Yeah, Joe Anderson School got of it. Business. Not- it's because of, like, student loans, it's pretty easy to get loans, mm-hmm. right? You, you get a lot of capital, yes. so a lot of individuals have capital to pay for school. Yes, Right, and so what happens when there's a lot of capital to f- that, that funnels into supply a certain demand. area, supply yes. and demand? Yeah. It's like, well, they got the money, so let's increase the pricing. Yes. So they're increasing the pricing because of all the money from student loans and things like that that are available. That's it, my opinion. Interestingly enough, I agree with you 100%. I've had that thought many times. It's like that's why our our college costs are out of control. It's because the money's easy. And we can get it, right? And so why wouldn't they increase the prices? And if you look at the inflation rate on education, it's way above regular inflation. Right, right, right. And it's been that way for, I don't know how long, at least the 20 years that I've sort of paid attention. But I bet you it's been going on 30 years or more. The inflation rate's 5 6%, 7%, whereas normal inflation is 2 yeah. or 3 something like that. It's, it's ridiculous, but that's where, that's where we're at. And now as a consequence, you've got a lot of kids uh, that have a lot of debt and or a lot of parents that feel like they need to pay off that debt, and it's it's going to really wreck their retirement. That's that's the problem here. Right. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I paid one hundred forty thousand dollars for my kid to get a sociology degree. Right. Right. And they're not working. Yeah. <laughs> so they're still on my payroll. Right. You know, right. And then people are tapping their 401k plans and not understanding the tax to pay for some of this, too. Yeah, that is true. Because, Huge uh, mistakes. You know, 401k plans, if you've already got an income, which a lot of you do, and then you take money out of your 401k, now you're looking at uh, 40% tax. And if you're under 59 and a half, it's another 10% on top of that. 50% is kind of normal for this type of thing. So stick around. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. This is Your Money, Your Wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. Welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al. Thanks for tuning in. Um, So a a report came out, Alan, from the National Association of Government Defined Contribution Administrators. Okay. It's provided a whole list of statistics uh, that is just about guaranteed to strike terror into the heart of anyone who's ever contemplated retirement. Oh, boy. Okay. So th- this is going to motivate us I to get serious? So. I don't know. So it's, it starts here. It's the unfortunate state of Americans' financial um, preparedness for retirement is well documented and may be summed up in two words. Not ready. Not ready to not, retire. Not quite ready. Okay. Not quite ready. So <clears throat> I'm going to go through a couple of these. And... Uh, We'll go from there. 22%. Just 22% of workers are very confident they will have enough money in retirement, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute's annual retirement confidence survey. 22%. 22. So 80%, roughly, Roughly, is not confident, not very confident. Okay. 45%, according to um, a congressional testimony, 45% of Americans have saved exactly nothing. Oh, boy. Towards retirement. Zero. 45% 45% of Americans have saved exactly nothing, not a zip. Oh, boy. In fact, although lots of higher net worth folks have and use retirement accounts, those on the lower end of the spectrum are truly ill-prepared. So here's some testimony. Overall, the average working household has little to nothing saved for retirement. The median retirement account balance is only $3,000 for working-age households. 
in only 12000 for household. Approaching really? retirement. The median. Oh, my goodness. In two-thirds of working households with earners between ages 55 and 64, at least one earner has saved less than one year's income for retirement. Okay. And we know from Fidelity's study, they recommend eight to ten times your final pay, which still may not even be enough. So, boy, okay, that's scary. So what do we do? How do All we right. Get, we I got, got more. We got, oh, we, <laughs> you're going to scare us some more? Not since uh, the Great Depression, Alan. According to the report that the magnitude of the financial challenges that will be faced by upcoming retirees, the first generation since that terrible time to do so. 20 years beyond age 65 is the headline on this one. Uh, that's the expected additional lifespan for a woman of 65 years. Two years longer than a man. So if you're 65, you got 20 more years. Okay. That's... All right. Do you have enough capital? We talked about people turning age 100. Yes, we but did. But in 2050, there's going to be 3.8 3. 3. million. Yeah, 3.8 million. That's right. So what happens in like 2090? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be all of us. Oh. oh, boy. Well, you know what? That's a lot of bad news. All I got right. some good news. Oh, I got five more here. Huh? One out of six. Just one out of six employers offers health insurance coverage to retirees these days. One out of six. Okay. I say before that was probably maybe seventy percent. It was. It was. It was a lot more in the old days. Yeah. Uh, Two hundred twenty thousand bucks. That's how much the average sixty-five-year-old couple can expect uh, to part with over the next twenty years in out-of-pocket costs for health care. Two hundred twenty thousand bucks. Sixty-five-year-old couple. That's your out-of-pocket expense in sure. retirement. Two hundred twenty grand. Do you have yeah. that now? Yes, I, I know. I know that stat. Uh, let's see. That's the projected annual growth rate is 5.8% rate of health care spending through 2022. Oh, boy. That's like college. I mean, health care is going up faster than you can imagine, too. <sighs> let's see. 62%. That's all the average retiree can expect Medicare to pay for his health care expenses once it finally kicks in. Okay. 62%. I would so, say if you surveyed people, what do you think they would say? 100%. 100%. Yeah. So, in other words, you got to come up with about 40% yourself. Hmm. All right, I got two more for you. Okay. 38%. Let's see what that means. That's how much your medical expenses you'll have to pay when you file a claim with Medicare. Okay. All right. In case you're wondering how your medical expenses will shake out, the report very kindly broke them down as follows. 23% for out-of-pocket uh, prescription drugs expense. 32% for Medicare premiums for Part B and D. And 45% for... Co-pays, cost sharing, and deductibles, and then uh, finally two hundred thousand. That's the headline. Remember, we mentioned long-term care insurance. Uh, well, if you don't have it, it turns out you may need it. The figure immediately above is what you'll end up paying for a single year of skilled nursing facility: two hundred thousand bucks. Two hundred thousand. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Well, oh that's my. pretty rough. Oh my. Here's some good news. You want some good news sure. to end the show? Yeah. Uh, this is from wealthmanagement.com. There is rare good news on the retirement front. A record 13.6% of 401k participants raised their savings rate during the first quarter of this year because they've been listening to Your Money, Your Wealth podcast. I think so. Across the country. And get this. A recent Gallup poll found out that two out of three Americans would rather save than spend. Two out of three. So maybe this is going to reverse in a few years. Well, who's saying that? Two out of three. In yeah, the Gallup they're poll. saying it, but are they doing it? Uh, probably not. And they, I, pro they probably asked two. They probably asked three people, and two two of them said, "Yeah." <laughs> I guarantee you. I would say most people listening right now. You're driving your car. You're all right. If I ask you, would you rather save or spend? I guarantee you, they'll say, "Well, I'd, I'd much rather save." But yes. wh where are you going right now? You're going probably somewhere to spend some money. You know, we, we see this, like, here's another example of that same phenomena, which is we have people come into our office and they say, you know what, Joe Al, I spend 4000 a month. That's it. That's it. And then we kind of run through the numbers, their salary, their taxes, and, and if they spend 48000 you know, 4000 4, a month, 48000 a year, they would have about 140000 extra each year. Right. All right. So Cuz yeah, they make 200,000 bucks a year. Right, right. right. They pay some taxes, they save a little bit yeah, yeah. the 401k so, plans. Whatever the numbers are. You know, you go, "All right, so so this all right, so you're able to save about $10,000 per month." Does that sound about right? Oh, no. No, we don't no. save a penny. But we don't live high on the hog. 
there, uh, yeah, there's, you do. There's a lot of denial out there, isn't there? Well, well, let me th- let's think about it. Um, okay, my uh, what groceries is a couple hundred bucks. My property, yeah, insurance utilities, is utilities. Uh, that's about it, right? I, no. you know, I actually I did the math last night. I only spend twenty two hundred dollars. Twenty two hundred bucks a month. Oh, let's see. Do you do you have a car? Oh yeah. Do, do, does it break down? Ever? Yeah, I gotta fix it. Do you ever go on vacation? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you buy gifts for Christmas? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. What about all that stuff? Yeah, there's a lot. To, you know what? Especially living in San Diego, living the dream, right? It's not that cheap. <sighs> it is not that cheap at all. All right, buddy. Well, we're done uh, for the day here. Um, but what are you gonna do? Hit the gym? Uh, yeah, let's see. What am I gonna do? I'm going to. I'm gonna go to church at five o'clock tonight. Saturday night church. You wow. wanna come? Um, I'll save a seat for you. All right. Yes, please do so. <laughs> Episcopal Church in Del Mar. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful weekend. For Big Al Clopine, I'm Joe Anderson. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. We'll see you next week.